335 horsepower, 50-50 weight distribution 0 to 60 in about 4 seconds. This is a long-awaited 5th generation Toyota Supra. We had to wait for almost 2 decades for this legendary model to come back, but it has everything we asked for. An eye-catching design, straight 6 under the hood and a rear-wheel drive. The new Supra is also based on the BMW Z4, which isn't necessarily a bad thing as some people may think. Let me tell you why. So let's start with the powertrain. The 2020 Supra is powered by a BMW sourced B58 power unit, a turbocharged 3 liter inline 6 producing 335 horsepower and 365 pound feet of torque. It really is a fantastic engine. There is no turbo lag, it generates a lot of torque right off the start and gives you smooth and effortless performance. The best thing about this motor is that you can push it to the limits for a long period of time without any power decrease. The power unit is paired to an excellent ZF's 8-speed automatic transmission. Both upshifts and downshifts are quick, pretty much as quick as in a dual clutch, and the biggest advantage of it being a conventional automatic is that there is no jerkiness comparing to dual clutch transmissions. I was also happy with its logic and automatic mode. The trance was always in the right gear and quick to respond. What surprised me the most about the Supra is its dual personality. In normal driving mode the ride is quiet and refined, making it a great cruiser but oh boy, when you put it into sport mode it becomes a different car. The adaptive dampers stiffen up, you have an incredible amount of mechanical grip and thanks to 50-50 weight distribution and low center of gravity, the Supra is really well balanced and nimble. I can't also complain about the brakes. Even after an hour of aggressive driving, they never faded and the car was always stable under heavy braking. The steering with variable ratio is precise and direct, but I would expect a little bit more feedback from it. The Supra also turned out to be relatively fuel efficient. In normal driving conditions I averaged 22 miles per gallon in the city, 32 on highway and 26 combined. Getting inside the new Supra you will see many elements from BMW, including previous generation iDrive infotainment system and by all means that's not a criticism because BMW makes one of the most intuitive interiors in the industry. The quality is good, although there are some cheap plastics like this fake carbon fiber. The sitting position just like in a proper sports car is great. You literally sit a few inches above the road and being 6 foot 1, I did not have any issues finding a good seating position. The seats themselves are very supportive and surprisingly comfortable. In case you wonder, the trunk offers 10.2 cubic feet of space. I'm really glad Toyota decided to bring the Supra back and even though it shares many components with BMW Z4, that doesn't bother me at all. The fact that this car was co-developed with BMW is in my opinion the best thing that could have happened. I loved every second of driving the new Supra and I'm really looking forward to testing the 2021 model, which has some mechanical improvements over this year's model. The all new Supra is relatively affordable considering the performance it offers. Pricing starts at $42,990 for a 255 horsepower 2.0 model. The 3.0 costs $8,000 more and my tester the 3.0 Premium with driver assist package was priced at $56,615. If you wonder how I would spec out my Supra, click the link in the description. Thanks for watching.